Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Dr. Paul, Liberty Hill Comics. Today we have the back cover to Noah's Superman number nine. This, as you, if you're following the channel, you know that this comic was literally covered in tape, almost laminated in tape. We've removed all the tape. We did it with mostly solvent Vestine bath and a number of tools to remove the carrier, including microfine forceps and micro spatula. Once the carrier was off, we've been now coming back through and removing the adhesive. Now, this paper did not have adhesive because it didn't have tape in these areas at least on this side of the book. My hands are clean and dry. We do have some adhesive we need to remove that we're gonna work on today. We have a little bit of it down here and I showed you before the best way to test this is just to test tackiness with your finger. So we have a lot of adhesive right here where we were able to save the paper some adhesive here in this super thin paper here that's not even a full width thickness. It's been, it was torn. So we have less than a thickness of paper there. That's gonna be tough probably. Little bit of adhesive in this area here and then just a tiny bit down here. I think I'm just gonna roll this up with a crepe square, maybe try a crepe square here but I think in these areas, the best approach is going to be some solvent. So let's get started. I can feel just a little bit here. I have my crepe square. Again, all the tools that I use, I've created a list in the description to help you if you want to practice these things. Obviously, get yourself some inexpensive books to practice on. Okay, we completely got rid of that area. That worked great. I don't really feel anything in here. I'm just going to give it a light wipe. Okay, now there's an area here. We're going to gently try the crepe square and see what happens. It's just peeling the paper right up. That may happen regardless of whether we use solvents or the crepe square, but I think solvents are a slightly better choice because we already know what the crepe square is going to do. For sure, it's going to just peel that half layer up. All right, I have a waste bin just off camera, so I'm just going to get rid of that little material from the crepe square, and I have Bastine in a beaker, and I'm delivering it with a syringe. This is a three mil BD syringe with an 18 gauge needle. Please use Bastine responsibly in a well ventilated area. Please use needles responsibly. This is not a Sharps safety course, so I will trust that you found me. You can probably find a video on how to safely use needles somewhere, and you can practice safe use of Sharps. All right, let's see what's going to happen here. And the reason I'm using the syringe is because with the syringe, I can literally deliver less than a drop of solvent if I want to. It just gives me a lot more control over the placement of the solvent. Those of you that have been with the channel for a while know that I will frequently comment about how... And we do want to keep this wet. As 
I was saying, I'll frequently comment about how whenever you introduce a solvent to your paper, you you want to you want to introduce it across the entire paper all at once very quickly because if you introduce a solvent and you allow it to be pulled through the paper by capillary action it will pick things up as it travels and then it will eventually dissolve uh, rather it will eventually evaporate when it does all the things that it picked up in its travels will be left behind so what does that look like well if you remember from science class chromatography it looks like what we call a tide line right now it looks like i have a tide line here but of course when this dries um it's going to dry a uniform color we're not i don't think we will have a tide line here the reason i bring it up now is because i just spent months explaining to you in videos that you want to introduce solvents across the entire page all at once and now you're seeing me do something different than that so I want to give you the explanation the reason why we're doing something different today is because this page has already spent many hours in a complete solvent bath immersion okay anything that the solvent would have picked up and moved vis-a-vis dirt, grime, certain elements of the ink, anything that could potentially create a tide line, those things have already been removed from the paper by the hours that it's spent in solvent bath. So it is now safe to just wet one spot on the page. But that's the only reason why it's safe. So unless you've already had something in a solvent bath for a long time, don't do what I'm doing right now. Do not introduce solvent just in one little spot and expect to get a good outcome. So what you will get, the solvent will do what solvents do. It's going to be taken up by capillary action through the medium, in this case, comic book cover. It's going to carry things with it because that's what solvents do and then when it evaporates it's going to deposit those things and you're going to get a tide line tide lines somewhat maybe non-intuitively once they've been deposited they're very difficult to remove uh, even with the same solvent so you would think well, all those things are soluble in this solvent. So the same solvent that created the tide line, I'll just use that solvent and I'll remove the tide line. And I don't actually know the, the science behind why that doesn't work, but I can tell you in practice, empirically, that does not work very well. You will continue to get... Uh, you will have a hard time removing a tide line even with the exact same solvent that was used to deposit the tide line. And if there's any uh, experts out there who want to educate us, please let me know in the comments why that is. Because I, I don't know. But I know from practice that's the case. And tide lines can be obviously very unsightly. And, you know, if you're looking for third party grading, obviously third party graders frown upon them. And it's a bit of a self inflicted wound for the kind of work we're doing. Because it's manageable, we should be able to do all these things without creating tide lines. So obviously, I'm going to do my best to avoid them, and I'm going to try to give you all the tools 
but you need to avoid them as well. Yeah. We worked so hard to keep as much of this paper as we could when we removed the carrier, but again, this paper's come apart. And it's even flaking here now into three layers. And I'm concerned, you know, that's going to happen all down this page. But again, you don't have too many choices here. The person who put the tape here is, or was, the person that did this damage to the book, not us. We're trying to undo the damage. If we leave this tape here, what would happen is all the areas where you see this tape residue where we're unfortunately not able to save everything, but we're able to save something, all of those areas would just be gone, just disintegrate away. Because tape over time does that. Tape is a short-term solution a long-term problem. It's non-archival. doesn't preserve the paper, the inks. In fact, it, it actively destroys them. So now that does take years, sometimes decades. Nevertheless, it happens and it will happen. You're guaranteed, if you leave the tape there, you're guaranteed to lose 100% of this paper that the tape was on. So it will all be gone eventually. So we're trying to avoid that. I've had some comments, polite um, and thoughtful. So I certainly welcome them that, you know, we should have left this book alone, that it was better off before we started and I'm sympathetic to that voice. Um, I recognize that the book looks less good. But I disagree. And the reason why is because it was superficially good looking before. Vis-a-vis -vis all that tape. And that beauty was superficial. It was, in fact, already damaged. It was, in fact, deteriorating. And we're setting it free, actually, from that. So, while it may not look as good, and I certainly understand, again, I'm, I'm sympathetic to somebody who says, you know, you made it look worse. Well, we're not done with it yet, but I certainly, even when we are done, you could probably make that argument if you want to. So I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying I have different priorities than you. My priority for this book is not to make it look good, first and foremost. My priority with this book is to preserve it, first and foremost. Now... I would like for it to present as well as it can. So I will do everything to do that as long as it doesn't conflict with my first goal, which is to preserve it. So if I have to put non-archival tape on a book to make it look good in the short run, but long term, that's actually going to destroy the book. That's not a decision I would make. And to the extent that I have been empowered by the owner to remove the tape, and I can undo what's been done here, I'm happy to do that. And I'm happy to share the techniques with you. 
So this is tedious and slow going. What I like to do is since we don't have any adhesive anywhere else on this page, we just focus on this edge. What I like to do is just start one way and go clockwise. I end up usually going clockwise, not for any particular reason, just out of habit. Okay, this is all good. We have a little bit of tackiness right here on the edge. Some here as well. We're gonna still lose some more of this paper. Because I think the ink is actually literally moved into this layer of adhesive that we're dealing with. So I think in order to remove the adhesive, we have to remove the ink, unfortunately. It's just so thin right here. So I think we are gonna lose more of this in order to accomplish our goal of long-term preservation. I think it's going to be worth it in the end. But, teach his own. Really the only thing that matters ultimately for this book, of course everybody's entitled to an opinion, the only real opinion that matters is the opinion of the owner. Because it's his book, and he can do with it what he likes. And he's decided to send it to me for this activity which I've agreed to do and I'm sharing with you viewers but it's his book it's his business and um, one of the great things about the comic book hobby if you approach it correctly is that there's room for everybody right like, I'm not mad at the people that disagree with this way to deal with the book at all um, and in fact, I'm not mad that they're sharing their opinion with me either. I appreciate it. And uh, I'm glad that they feel comfortable in this forum sharing their opinion. And I want it to remain open to folks who share their opinion. In this particular instance, you know, he gave a rationale for what he thought. And, and um, it didn't change my mind. But in the future, at some point, maybe someone will change my mind. Because they'll give me... A rationale that I hadn't thought of before or some new information that I wasn't aware of maybe they'll change my mind if we don't have a forum in which people are comfortable expressing their opinions even if the, they think the opinions may be offensive or maybe something that I would disagree with then we don't have an opportunity to learn we don't have an opportunity to change our mind and become better people and better hobbyists Better people, obviously, is first and more, most important. <laughs> so we definitely want to keep the forum open and be welcoming to all opinions, as long as they're expressed respectfully. And the vast majority... opinions here have been super respectful so so far so good in terms of us trying to create a community where people can express themselves freely and 
disagree respectfully. We can keep the exchange positive and we can all become better. Like I said, better people, better hobbyists. It's awesome. As we're recording this, the Fed just raised rates another 75 basis points. The Federal Open Markets Committee, that is. And we're seeing some signs that inflation's coming in, in line. That obviously is their stated goal with the interest rate hikes. So there's some evidence that the rate hikes are working, which I think is a relief to many. Of course, there's there can be winners and losers in that too. If you were shopping around for a mortgage, maybe you would have rather had lower rates and higher inflation. If you've already got a home or you're not shopping or you're not using credit right now, Maybe you're really thrilled inflation's coming in line because high interest rates don't don't impact you much. So from my perspective, it kind of is what it is. Yeah, your circumstances may tie your hands on certain aspects of your market participation. But there's also usually a little bit of latitude, even in the most constrained lives, to use whatever's going on in financial markets to your advantage. So, for example, for the past decade savings accounts have returned negative rates of return in real spending power because they've been, you know, somewhere around a quarter of a percent. And inflation, even before it got out of hand, was running at one and a half to two percent. So you were literally losing money if you had money in a savings account. Now, with interest rates higher, you can get savings accounts with 3% return, 3% interest rates. And I know you may be saying that you're still losing money because inflation's higher than that. And that's true at the very moment. But I think those rates are going to be sticky. And inflation, we're actually, we're actually experiencing some parts of the marketplace are already deflationary. So that'll continue. And we're going to have some amount of deflation. Again, we've already, we're, we're currently experiencing it. We're in the middle right now of a very kind of a mixed market where some asset, some commodities are becoming less expensive. And they're actually deflationary and some are per perhaps still on the rise. Services, for example, are still expensive and probably will continue to rise. Commodities have come down quite a bit. So all asset classes are connected. We don't live in a vacuum or in a bubble. As the Fed raises rates, it affects stocks, it affects crypto, and it affects our favorite asset class, comic books. All right, I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing here, but I'm going to take a little bit of a break. This page, we need to get the adhesive off. I think we got it from here, so it's really just from here to here. We need to remove the rest of this adhesive. 
and then we'll be ready to put this in an aqueous bath and whiten this paper up some. We'll use a bleaching agent, mild, mild, mild bleaching agent that'll actually strengthen the paper. Just for contrast, this is white. This isn't even brilliant white, but this is white cardstock. So we've got a fair amount of whitening we can do. I don't, certainly I don't want to get to this color, but we can whiten it quite a bit from where it is. Also for contrast, here's an owl card. So I think that paper in that spot is, it's interesting, right on the edge here, I would say that I, it looks more tan than off-white. Tan, but it's lighter than tan, but it's closer to tan than off-white. But if we look at it up here, I think it's clearly closer to off-white than it is tan. So I think it's fair to call this paper between off-white and tan. We're going to bleach it some. And the other thing that we'll do is do our best to get rid of this bleed-through. This bleed-through is from the Daisy Red Rider ad. So the Red Rider... This is where it says Red Rider, right here. Red Rider that way. So we'll get, I think we have techniques that should do a pretty good job of taking care of that and whitening this paper. That'll be the next step for this after we remove this adhesive. But like I said, I'm gonna take a little break here and we'll come back at that adhesive another day. I again would just like to say thank you very much to everybody that's joined the channel recently. If you enjoy this content, you enjoy my rambling, please give it a thumbs up. Please leave me a comment. Let's have a, a conversation. Recommend it to a friend if you enjoy it. And uh, obviously subscribe to the channel so that you can get all of the content that I'm releasing. It typically doing daily uploads. So, And I alternate most of the time between comic book conservation and unboxings and market reports. So... Until next time, take care of one another.